Hi everyone and welcome. So today we have a Q&A. I have really been looking forward to doing this for quite a while. So many questions from all of you in the comments. I've really enjoyed reading all of the comments and trying to answer the questions as best I can. So I thought definitely a Q&A is due. We're gonna cover a whole range of topics from the training that is on YouTube. Also some nutrition and tips. So yes, lots to get through, let's begin. My name is Caroline, I am 36 years old. I live in Northern Ireland. I know many of you have been trying to figure out my accent. So yes, I live in Northern Ireland. I am from Northern Ireland. I am married. I am mother to two beautiful little children. I am a certified personal trainer. Five foot two, approximately 57 kg, about nine stone. I tend not to weigh myself, but that is approximately what I am. So yes, I do love to read. I love learning new skills. So whether it's gardening, I love painting. We as a family are quite active. We love days out. We go here, there and everywhere. There's lots of cool places in Northern Ireland to visit and lots of fun days out. I've always been active. Once I became a mother, I sort of realized that there was so much information out there. And speaking to friends and family, people were on all sorts of diets, they were trying all different types of training, and most of them weren't really having success. They were either focusing too much on the scales, not eating enough food, tracking every single thing that they did, spending so much time, effort and money. Sometimes for me, it was quite difficult to hear the stories that I was hearing from people I knew who were really putting in so much effort, also combined with guilt if they had a slice of cake. Exercise and well-being in general, it's a positive thing, it should be positive. Everybody can do it in their own little way. There's so much information out there. There is so much focus on aesthetics. It takes you to enjoy the journey. And to be honest, it should turn into a journey that you don't want to end. We're all different, we all enjoy different things. Whatever you enjoy doing, do it. Make healthier choices, be active and have fun. That's basically it. Balance is key with training, nutrition and lifestyle, everything in general. Balance is really important. When the COVID-19 situation arose, I just decided to grab my phone and record one of my home workouts just to send to family and friends so that could maybe help motivate them also to those people who I wasn't able to train. Of course, over time, more and more people started watching it. I am... Um, amazed as to how it has grown. I sometimes can't quite believe that how many of you fantastic people join me in these home workouts. So yeah, I hope you are all having so much fun. So now we're on to some questions all relating to the actual workouts that you guys have been joining me in. Can you gain muscle at home? Absolutely. All you'll need is your body weight. That is enough to build strength, build muscle, muscular endurance, and also burn a lot of energy. Of course, mixing it up is great as well. If you have dumbbells, kettlebells, ankle weights, anything, as you know, we've used books and chairs as well to complement our training. So yes, you can certainly build muscle at home. What calories can I expect to burn during this workout? So this is definitely one of the most popular questions that I get asked. Basically, I am unable to sort of say how many calories you will burn during any sort of workout. And the reason is everybody is different. So many factors come into play talking about actual calories. First of all, your watch settings. So you could have it on high intensity or cardio or strength or weights. It could be a whole array of different settings, but mostly it is to do with your level of fitness, your weight, your rate of recovery, main thing, rate of exertion, how hard are you actually pushing yourself during this workout? So for example, you could burn 400 calories in a certain workout. The next week, if you do the same exact workout and maybe you just haven't had maybe enough sleep that week or you've been training a lot prior, you may burn 300 calories. So certainly the calories differ from person to person, day to day, workout to workout. How should I breathe during exercise? So a typical rule of thumb is to exhale on the exertion. So the hard part of the movement, exhale. If you're squatting, typically you inhale on the way down as if you're going underwater. As you come up out of the squat, you're coming out of the water and you're going to exhale. So you try and imagine that there. Also chest press, 
inhale and you're going to exhale on the hardest part which is obviously the push up the main thing is though don't hold your breath sometimes you could be doing squats or chest press with lighter weights and you're going at a little bit of a faster tempo as long as you're breathing try not to overthink the actual breathing process sometimes you can't always match your breathing to the actual exercise itself so please don't hold your breath just ensure that you're breathing you're quite comfortable letting oxygen into the muscles So the next question is definitely something that I want to cover. If I do lower abdominal exercises, will this burn belly fat? If I do inner thigh workouts, will this burn fat in my inner thighs? The simple answer basically is no to an extent. If you were to do lower abdominal exercises for 365 days a year, you may not lose belly fat in the lower abdominal area. If you did inner thigh workouts every single day for two weeks, Will you lose inner thigh fat? Not necessarily. It comes down to so many things. So basically I can't say in any of my videos, lose belly fat within two weeks, lose inner thigh fat within a month, that sort of thing. You cannot put a time on it. It depends on so many factors. Number one, nutrition, because you cannot spot reduce anywhere on the body. Yes, you can actually target certain areas with weight training. So say you really want to build up your shoulders, you can target shoulders, with strength training, you can target your glutes, your quads, certainly. You cannot target fat loss. Fat loss is a hole over the body. Of course, we store fat in different areas. Maybe some people have it more slightly on their tummy area. Maybe some people more on the outer thighs, but certainly it comes off generally as a whole. Reducing body fat is overall. It involves nutrition, moving your body and basically that's it in order to reduce fat of course targeting certain areas will help tighten that area working the quads the glutes the inner thighs all help strengthen that area very beneficial of course to your overall training so just bear that in mind if you ever see lose inner thigh fat in seven days there's a lot more to it than just simply doing that exercise for seven days how many times a week should i do hit Everybody's different. Some people love HIT and they do it five days a week. I love HIT. However, I only do it once per week usually. Once a week for me, I'm able to give it my 110% effort. I really look forward to actually on a Sunday morning. So generally on a Saturday night, I'm having my takeaway and I know that I'm going to get up and I'm going to smash those burpees. In regards high intensity interval training, if you ever do a workout and you think that it wasn't that difficult, Maybe it is just because you haven't tried hard enough. And I actually do mean that. What I mean is there's days where you're maybe just not feeling like you're really ready to smash that certain workout. And sometimes it's better to just do something else. The hit that I provide, it is time based. So even if you are super fit, if you're knocking these workouts out of the park, especially the high intensities, you should be pretty fatigued because you're going at your max. You're giving it the best that you can. So depending on your level of fitness, everybody should be pretty tired after a hit session because hopefully you've been able to give it your all. So if you do maybe 40 seconds and you think that wasn't so bad, maybe try next time jumping higher, landing lower, holding it a little bit deeper or even completing more reps within the time period. So certainly bear that in mind. Every hit session should be challenging. Lifting weights really does change your shape. Cardio, you will, of course, over time with correct nutrition, lose body fat. However, combined with the strength training, that is what actually changes your shape. Plus the feeling of feeling stronger, which is pretty epic in itself. Yes, of course, there may be times when you can't do certain movements. You've maybe never done them before, or you just haven't quite mastered them. I would certainly suggest just taking it slow, doing maybe half of the movement itself, still pushing yourself, still practicing push-ups is a perfect example. It does take practice and a lot of dedication over a bit of time to be able to do all different types of push-ups. If you can't, and it is within the workout, simply, as I've shown in other videos, maybe put your hands on a chair and do incline push-ups. Of course, absolute beginners can begin on the wall where you're pushing off the wall. There is, of course, the option of the knees. So you can always alter any version of the exercise to suit yourself on that day as well, how you're feeling and your ability. Training on your period. So yes, I've had this question quite a few times. Um, can I do HIT on my period? Should I train on my period? And the answer is it is completely up to you. Always tailor the workouts to yourself, how you're feeling. It is just really a personal preference. 
So another common question I get is how do I work my arms typically? I would work my arms normally within all of my chest sessions, my back sessions, and also body weight training. Very rarely would I actually do arm specific workouts. My triceps are usually covered within chest sessions, my biceps within back sessions. Also, my triceps get a good workout when I do my shoulder workouts. All of those push-ups, of course, really help with the triceps as well. It is important, in my opinion, to incorporate chest and back workouts. Obviously, chest, you're working your pectoral muscles. It will help so much with your other training, such as your push-ups, holding your weight in those planks. Back training really helps those pull-ups if you, that's something that you're wanting to work on. It does overall give you that balance between your lower and upper body. So definitely, I would suggest to always try, if you see a video, chest and triceps or back and biceps, give them a go. I know some people maybe haven't trained specifically back before or chest for that matter. It's so beneficial for the arms definition, overall strength and overall your whole entire training. So some people have asked about rest days. What can I do on my rest days? Everybody is different. You can do absolutely nothing. However, some people like to maybe do an hour of yoga, some people class a hike or a walk, a long walk as a rest day, others may be swimming. For me, a rest day would usually still involve walking Winston for at least one hour and also I may do maybe 30 minutes stretching while I'm watching TV. Make your rest day something relaxing, something that you enjoy to do. You could even use it as time to work on your flexibility or balance. Basically, repetitions are so important. I will always incorporate repetitions within many of my workouts. Incorporating repetitions for the muscle gains is definitely, definitely so important. Of course, we all love no repeats. We don't know what's coming next. Every exercise is different and they're so much fun. Still beneficial, of course. I do suggest you try and embrace those repetitions. Yes, okay, sometimes I do four sets of something. Sometimes I may do 10 sets of something, but that's just the way I like to train and hopefully it works for you too. If a workout pops up for that day and you're unable to do it, for example, simply don't have that certain equipment like a stability ball, of course I have many workouts all in the playlist section on the YouTube page, all categorised, body weight glutes, we've got dumbbell shoulders, that sort of thing, so you can go through and certainly pick a different workout for that day. Dumbbells ideally would be two pairs of dumbbells, one heavier pair and one lighter pair. However, I know how hard it is to actually get your hands on dumbbells at this moment in time. So yes, certainly that is optimum if you can have two pair of dumbbells. One pair of dumbbells is great too because then you can just drop to one dumbbell as and when you need to. Kettlebells are handy, ankle weights, stability ball, also booty bands, resistance bands, ab wheel, push-up bars. There is quite a range and you can do so many things with all of these types of equipment to get a solid workout at home. Changing it up is so important and it keeps it fun and interesting. Of course, I know many people prefer not to jump for certain reasons. If there are many low impact workouts on my playlist as well. So if there is ever a high intensity workout or a one hour workout that involves jumping, there is always the low impact options that you will find on my playlist. Another comment I do notice quite often is following an ab workout if there are crunches in it. A lot of people do experience strain in the neck. Over time, your neck does strengthen in that you're able to lift your head without straining your neck. It does take time. I would say stop as and when you're feeling too much strain in your neck. But a few little tips if you're in that crunch position, flat on the floor, and you're gonna raise up. Look at a spot in the ceiling, not straight ahead, above, but above and in front. So keep your eye on a spot in front on the ceiling and aim to lift your head, neck and upper back all at the same time through using just your upper abdominal muscles. So you can practice that, take it slow, lower with control as well. Your neck shouldn't actually move, it should come up as part of your upper back. So now I'm just gonna cover some simple tips for you all. So these are quite general tips, they may not apply to everybody, but there's some of the major tips that I would certainly say to people when I was training them. My number one tip would be portion size. Now I don't mean actually getting the skills out and weighing your food, what I mean is learning about how many calories are in chicken breast, how many calories are in an egg, for example, 
how many calories in, are in the egg white. A perfect example of this is actually nuts. If you take a handful of nuts, what you maybe think you're eating in regards to calories is maybe a lot different than what you're actually consuming. The calorie counting apps that are now available, a lot of them for free, are fantastic for gaining that little bit of knowledge. Focus on your body composition. Focus on how your clothes feel, how you feel, focus on your performance rather than focusing on the scales. I just want to cover a wee example. A few years ago, I did a little experiment, my own little experiment. I stood on the scales every single day for about a month. So what happened was during the morning, I weighed myself, of course that night, I was maybe about four pounds heavier pretty much every single night, obviously because I'd be eating. Then it came to the time of the month, and when I, whilst I was on my period, I actually went up to about six pounds heavier. If I was on a weight loss journey for that month and I was tracking my progress every single day, I wouldn't know where I was because basically I was up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down. But day to day, it can be extremely demotivating to stand on those scales and see you've maybe put on three or four pounds, but really it's just your natural fluctuation in weight. So I would advise to incorporate some form of stretching. Of course, a cool down is some gentle stretching. However, sometimes spending just even 15 minutes per week stretching out maybe your hamstrings a little bit extra. Foam rollers are great for that as well to help prevent injury. Touching on what I had sort of mentioned before about trying to ditch those scales as much as possible, another great way to track your progress is progress pictures. You don't need to show these to anybody, but have your own little picture, and of course, over time, take another picture. The difference you see can sometimes be quite remarkable because sometimes you forget how far you've came. Also, focusing on your actual performance, nailing those first push-ups, and maybe holding that complete wall sit for one minute. All these little accomplishments all add up over time. So so always try to think of your performance little goals and also how you feel in your clothes. Another great tip is to change up your training. I love pulses, slow paced, fast paced, pyramid training, drop sets. All these little methods can all be incorporated. It's good to change it up, keeps it interesting, keeps your body guessing. You may notice real improvements in your training if you've been sticking to the same sort of format. Same with running. Running, of course, great to go out and do a 10k. Changing up your running can also be hugely beneficial for me. I love doing 10k, I love doing 20k, I also love sprinting for 400 meters. Or if I'm doing maybe a 5k, I will do 4k and try and run as fast as I can for the last kilometer. Take a break before a beginner and go for that last kilometer. So yeah, changing up can have many benefits over time. Just some simple nutrition tips that I would maybe suggest as a general sort of guide. Increasing your vegetable and salad intake, whether it be with your dinner or your lunch. Swapping white bread and white rice for the likes of whole grain breads and brown rice. If you're eating out, try to maybe go for the tomato based pasta rather than the creamy based pasta. Try to pick the leaner option of the steak. Try not to let yourself get too hungry. You should always have accessible, healthy snacks readily available. There are so many different ways to incorporate a little bit more activity into your day. Not taking the car so much, walking if the shop is handy, taking the elevators rather than the stairs, of course, a typical example. But certainly all these little things add up. Enough sleep. This is a tricky one. I know we all have busy lives, but certainly for me personally, I do try to get at least eight hours every single night. For me, it really helps with obviously my training. When you are tired, it can have an effect on your appetite. You could be more hungry simply due to higher levels of cortisone, which is a stress hormone. And one final little tip, have fun. That's what it's all about. You should want to come back for more and more. Being active can mean anything for everybody. It could be walking your dog, it could be rock climbing, it could be doing triathlons, and it could be strength training. Have fun with it, do whatever pleases you. So now we're on to nutrition. So yes, this is definitely a big question that I've been asked. What sort of plan do I follow? What diet am I on? Basically, I'm on no diet. I am a no plan. I don't follow any structure basically to my day. There are a few things that I don't do. So I don't count calories. I don't count macros. I don't cut. I don't bulk. I don't take protein supplements and I don't take pre-workouts, etc. I train hard and I eat as healthy 
as I can. Day to day, my calorie intake as well varies. I know that some days I'm hungrier, some days I'm not as hungry. If I feel hungrier, I will eat more food. That's it. I do eat out once or twice per week. Also, of course, my takeaway nearly every single Saturday night. When I do eat out, I do try to make a little bit healthier choices in that I would pick the leaner choice of protein, a leaner steak, also fish is a big one, and chicken for me. I always order as well a side of vegetables and a side of salad, as well as my chips or sweet potato fries. I do generally ask for the sauce to be separate, so whether it's peppered sauce or Caesar dressing, only because sometimes it can be drenched in the dressing. So that's another little tip, sauce or condiments on the side. I would typically look as well for the baked, grilled or steamed options, as opposed to certainly deep fat fried. If, for example, it was my birthday or it's Christmas Day, obviously, you eat a lot on Christmas Day, which is just fantastic. Who doesn't love Quality Street for breakfast? But the next day, all I do is return to my normal pattern of eating. So my nutrition, basically, a lot of lean protein. So it's generally going to be the chicken breast, going to be turkey, lean mince, lean steak. I also love salmon. I love tuna. So I would typically have fish two or three times a week also. Eggs are always in our fridge. If there's ever a day I open the fridge and there's not an egg, I'm like, I need to go get some eggs. Eggs are so versatile. I actually love eggs as a snack, all mushed up with a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. <laughs> my main carbs with my dinner would typically be the whole grain rice or sweet potato. Vegetables, I eat a lot of vegetables. I have vegetables every single night with my dinner. Also, I would have a lot of vegetables sometimes with my lunch, depending on what it is. Fruit wise, I tend to eat my fruit rather than drink it. I would just rather have a piece of fruit. So whether it be apples, I do love berries of all kinds. I love watermelon and I love bananas. There's a few things I always have in my cupboard and I'll show you when I do uh, what I eat in a day, you will probably see a big supply of some of these foods. So I always have a lot of nut butters, rice cakes, porridge. There's always avocados in the fridge, honey, tins of tuna, Greek yogurts always in the fridge. I love the fudge ones. We'd always have cheese of some sort. There's usually feta and Parmesan. I love Parmesan cheese sprinkled on my chicken Caesar salads. In the freezer, there's always at least one tub of Halo ice cream. One of my favorites, two scoops of Halo ice cream on an ice cream cone. Perfect little snack any time of the day. I am a big fan of nuts. I have different jars of different nuts. I usually try to buy them chopped. If not, I will simply just crush them myself. But yeah, I would have Brazil nuts, walnuts, and almond nuts. I love sprinkling them onto everything. <laughs> it may be a bowl of Weetabix with warm milk and banana, but more typically recently, it has been two slices of whole grain toast with two boiled eggs and maybe four turkey rashers into like a toasted sandwich. So that would be my breakfast of choice at the moment. However, I do love porridge, or sometimes I will simply have a slice of toast with avocado and egg. So yes, I change it up. I always have protein, of course, with every single meal that I have through the day. Lunch could again, of course, be that omelette. So I may have chicken or ham or tuna omelette with peppers, onions, some cheese sprinkled. I maybe have one egg and three or four egg whites and some sliced avocado on the side. Or it may be another one of my favorites is my take on a chicken and bacon Caesar salad. Sometimes I just use my turkey rashers if I have some left, cut those up. They're great to throw in as well. I have my homemade croutons and of course sprinkling of Parmesan. For dinner, I'm a very traditional kind of gal. My meat and two veg. <laughs> so typically it would be a steak or my salmon or chicken. I love to grill chicken. Along with that then, obviously a lot of veg, salads as well. A definite favorite of mine would be sweet potato fries. But then other nights I might make a burrito bowl, so I do like to change it up. Typically I have, of course, my protein, my carbs, and my healthy fats of some sort within my dinner. For dessert, nearly every single night, I do have my Barbell Protein Bar. I absolutely love the Barbell Protein Bars. I am not sponsored, by the way. There is quite a collection of Barbell Chocolate Bars in my cupboard. So um, yes, I will show you that in an upcoming video. 
So top snacks for me, definitely I would sometimes have maybe four snacks through the day. I really don't like to get hungry and I do always have little snacks readily available, of course, banana and peanut butter on rice cakes, yum, yum, yum. Or tuna and smashed avocado on rice cakes, watermelon, but one of my favorites would be the Faz yogurts. So yes, certainly a Faz yogurt in a bowl with some homemade granola, just sprinkle it in. Then strawberries, blueberries, honey, chocolate sprinkles. So yeah, quite delicious. Um, I would definitely mix it up. Greek yogurt is definitely a staple day to day for me. I love tea, I love coffee, and water-wise, I would drink about two to three liters a day. I generally drink quite a lot in the morning time. So by the time I come training, I've already drank a lot of water. So now we're on to my sort of typical training. So what you see on YouTube is actually my training. That is how I train. One day it could be no weights, body weight only, loads of reps of lunges. The next day it could be weighted lunges. The next day it could be hit training. I like to mix it up, as you know. So um, yeah, I like to have fun. I like to train how I feel. Some people have asked, do I compete? No, I have never competed in a show. To be honest, I'm not sure I would have the dedication with the whole nutrition, weighing, macro counting calorie thing. Um, basically, I just like to eat food and um, train hard. That's it. I would say I do look pretty much the same all year round. However, I don't know if you've noticed after a bicep workout, I do have a pump on. And if we're talking about glute day, I mean, I train for the feeling, not aesthetics. I really focus on having fun with my training, trying new things out, not really focusing on how my body's going to look. So certainly with hard training though, it does come aesthetic changes in regards your body composition, but I would suggest definitely focusing on your actual training and those changes will happen as a byproduct. Rest days, normally I do have one or two typical rest days. However, since I've been sharing my videos on YouTube, of course, I haven't had a rest day in so many days. One definitely coming soon. But what I would say is altogether, it is about four or five hours training a week, which is definitely certainly not overdoing it for me anyway. There have been times, of course, when I just basically take maybe five days off and do nothing, maybe apart from just walk the dog. Sometimes it's nice to have a good little break as well. Those few days taken off from training, it's perfectly fine. After a few days, you're back at it and you're ready to go and hit it even harder. My current cardio. So my cardio at the minute, as you see, is the hit on a Sunday. I love it. Also, of course, walking Little Winston every day. I am not running at the moment. I haven't ran since, I think, November. Last year, I finished the year off with running the New York Marathon. So yes, I haven't ran this year at all. Obviously, with doing YouTube, I also haven't had the time or felt that I needed to anyway. Um, there'll be times where I simply don't run for six months at a time and then maybe do a little bit of running coming up to running season, that sort of thing. The music is all from Epidemic Sounds. I will put a link in the next community post with some of the top favorite songs that you like and I like. As you've probably noticed, I do have a few favorites and they keep popping up in lots of the workouts. Music is definitely one of those ones. It is personal choice. So I know that I can't please everybody. I do try to handpick most of the songs to suit the workout. Sometimes I know people prefer a little bit faster, but certainly if I'm trying to maintain a sort of slower pace and focus on the movement, I will try to incorporate slower paced music to complement. One of the most common questions is how do I incorporate your actual workouts on YouTube into my weekly schedule? I did do a post a few weeks ago with a suggested weekly training split and yet I can completely understand the fact that you don't know what's coming up next so then you sort of think okay should I rest my chest today in case tomorrow is going to be chest or should I should I do that run today because tomorrow might be a leg session I completely understand it so in response to all of this I'm actually going to be taking the next one week off from providing daily workouts and that is only because I do have a few little things that I need to finalize I have been working on something that hopefully you will all love and here's just a little preview <laughs>
yes guys there you go that is coming the 21st of september there will be definitely more information coming real soon in the community post section so keep your eyes open for that in regards to the program ideally you would like a pair of dumbbells i know not everybody has a pair of dumbbells however just bear that in mind if you're ever out and about and you're able to gain or even borrow a pair of dumbbells from somebody who isn't using them ideally in a perfect world you would have two pairs of dumbbells a lighter weight and a heavier weight of course you will need a mat also as well as the dumbbells you may wish to gain a booty band also ankle weights however these are definitely not compulsory it's just something that you may like to have if you ever see them in the shop and you're able to purchase them or even online they're always great handy to have and you can put them into some of the workouts that will be coming just to make it that little bit more challenging so you guys i think that's it one last thing i want to thank you all so much it's been so much fun it's been such a journey and i just love your comments keep them coming while i am missing an action by the way i will put up a suggested training split for this week i'm so excited ready to get started i will see you next monday everybody have a super week happy training train hard and i'll see you then bye you call, I fall. There's a legacy between us We grow, we go